Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a, uh, just reviewed this, or not reviewed, uh, just revealed this kit rather. On my last haul video, Billy Bear sent me this kit. And I thought, you know what? It would be cool to build that. Just because it's a classic Ravel kit from 1957. And, uh, it's not a 1957 edition, it is the 1996 edition. But it would have been using the same molds and everything as they did in 57. So uh, I opened it up and I'm like, yes, this is gonna be cool. Be a quick, it, it, it'll be a quick build because it's a uh, curbside. As you can see, the, there's, no, uh, there's no engine or no hood. Then I busted it open and I saw a <laughs> multi-piece body. And I thought, oh my goodness, but it just excites me. This kind of stuff. Someone commented in my um, Renoir, 148 scale Renoir Corvette, 65 Corvette. They call <laughs> I forget who it was, but they said, you are a strange bird. Um, the way you like to, to build these weird kits. And um, when I saw this thing had a multi-piece body, um it didn't scare me <laughs> it didn't scare me at all it's it is i am strange i guess okay I'll, I'll admit it i am strange because this kind of stuff like excites me um i'll complain through the whole darn build but it's like you know what i'm getting to do something that that the the, the kid back in 1957 got to do and uh that that's what excites is exciting to me the imc kits their multi-piece bodies it was it was terrible to build but you know what through it all it ended up being a great experience and i'm going to build the uh, coupe version uh next uh, the one with the heart but anyway this has nothing to do with this video but it is anyway ravel accurately scaled it says cadillac eldorado <laughs> broham <laughs> that's another thing that was funny is uh i had a buddy of mine Name Rick, uh, not a modeler, but uh, he used to own a hobby shop over in, in uh, Brunswick, Georgia, near me, with the town where I work at. And uh, we were talking, we, we were joking one day, I would hang out at the hobby shop every day, and he, he said something about, he, he said, Broham. And he was joking, but that stuck with me forever. So every time I see Brom or whatever, I don't even know how, to, how you're supposed to pronounce it. I think it's Brom, but Broham is just so funny to me. Uh, every time I see that. But anyway, completely formed plastic, easy to build, <laughs> ready to paint. I bet. And it's got the figures too, the uh, man and the woman. She's she's here. It looks kind of creepy, almost like, I don't know. It's, kinda, it's I don't know if I'll do the figures. Um, I had figures on my uh, 27 Cadillac um, Gangbusters, and I, I mean, uh, sorry, 27 Lincoln Gangbusters kit, and I didn't do the the I didn't do the people on that one either. But anyway, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to jump on this, and uh, we will see where it goes. One thing about this kit, it reminds the first thing that I think about when I see a huge land is that I don't know. First of all, is it a land yacht or a land barge? I've always called them land barges. I think Butch over at uh, BK Model Cars said that they're land yachts. And that may be. It's, 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 it's much nicer than a barge. I mean, could you imagine riding around in a Cadillac Eldorado? Broham. I mean, that's no barge there. That is a yacht. So maybe it is a land yacht. But anyway, my friend, uh, one of the admins at the Facebook group, uh, Chris Callen, uh, we have three admins. Well, four, count myself. We have um, Chris Callen, Tony Roberts, and Mark Cusia, owner of uh, Hobby Nut Models. Those are the, uh, and, and myself, we are the four admins. But Chris Callen is a land yacht or land barge fanatic. He loves these big, uh, these big cars. And Chris, Chris doesn't have a YouTube channel. But he's a good friend of mine. But anyway, Chris, I'm gonna build this for you, buddy. Um, this is uh, this is cool, and uh, so I'm gonna jump into the the land yacht barge, and um, I'm gonna cut some parts, cut the parts off. Uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you is here is the carpet for the interior. But if you look closely, 
all that some guy did was take some sort of rotary tool and scar the uh, mold. <laughs> I mean, guys, this is 1957. This is not when this was when this mold that I'm holding this part that was produced in 1996, but the mold was made in 1957. Some guy they said, "Hey, George, get the rotary tool." Try to make that look like carpet. And, uh, George, you failed. You failed miserably. <laughs> because this is does not look like carpet at all. But anyway, it does give it some texture. But you can tell he just took a uh, rotary tool of some sort um, and scarred the mold. But anyway, classic. I mean, you, you don't get any more classic than this. Thank you, Billy, for sending me this kit. And, uh... I can't wait to get in the middle of this. And I might say, you know what? This is the biggest piece of junk I've ever... And I probably will get to that point. But anyway, <laughs> let's get started. Stand by. All right. So got all the parts cut loose from the trees. And all the parts, you know, it's not very many. That's it. But whoo-wee. This is going to be one more <clears throat> beast um but number one first there's only four steps in the instructions that's it the um the other side is just like an introduction to what the broham cadillac Eldorado <laughs> broham and uh and then the the four steps which you know it's fine you know what i'm noticing Oh, there it is. I was about to say that I don't have a second seat, but I do have a second seat. Okay, there are the seats. Um, what I, what I've, so, the, you know, obviously with an older kit, because they did, hey, check this out really quick. Not, I would never remove that. Reveal Incorporated 1957. I mean, yes, it's a 1980, I, I got it. It's a 1996 release, but it's a 1957 kit. This is cool. But it's going to be tough to get this body to, um, not to get to go together, but to, once you, once you get it together, um, for it to look right, because then you have to add these, these side panels and a lot if i'm not mistaken the majority of that side panel is is chrome so what i'll do is probably oh man i don't know maybe i'll bare metal foil it after it's mounted because the way i build things is i assemble as much as possible so i'm going to have this body together i'm not going to have paint this top part paint the bottom part and then try to glue it together and ruin a good paint job i'm not going to do that um i'm going to uh get as much together as possible and with that these these side pieces here i don't know because they glue on and if i were to try to bare metal foil this and then try to glue it on later. That would look so cheesy. So more than likely what I'm going to do is have it on there. Paint the car. And then go back and bare metal foil that. Or. I guess. Again. I, it looks like to me that that whole. Let me get this one. Well. It looks like the whole. Panel is chrome and this is that panel and then you also have a chrome you know it runs up here so yeah it probably would be easier if, once i get this on there i'll just bare metal fold it <clears throat> but um one quick thing one really quick thing in the comments of the haul video uh where this kit was introduced to you um rick zinc my my good buddy rick zinc at uh let's see rick it's a uh, skeletal remains scale auto restoration if you hadn't checked out rick's channel go check it out he said if you'll notice on the box art rick how do you know this man are you you're not that old are you but anyway 
Rick said, if you'll notice on the box art, the Lincoln Futura, that's what George Barris used to make the uh, Batmobile. Check it out, guys. That is cool. So anyway, Rick Zink. Oh, Rick, here's your uh, shop card right here. You guys go check out Rick Zink and uh, Skeletal Remains Scale Auto Restoration. Because Rick is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to classic models. I am not um, at all. I'm like, seat of my pants. Most of the time, you know, don't, don't really know what's going on. But anyway, Rick does. And for him to point out that Lincoln, that's cool that that, that was a George Barris, um, or that's what George Barris used for his baseline, at least for the uh, Batmobile. Anyway, guys, so I'm going to get to um, gluing. There's not many parts. So this is it. Here's the people, too. So they're over here. They're chilling out. And the windows and the chrome is back behind here. Only if there's not much chrome. Big, big grill. Uh, bumper ets like on each side and um, the wheels. And not to mention the chrome was really nice but uh i'm going to see how many parts of this i can get glued together um i don't know if i have to put see the problem with this car is they've got like the interior is completed it's put in and then the uh the bodies you know two body parts are put together well i probably will have to put the carpet in paint the car and uh and then put the seats in later. I don't know. I have no earthly idea. I'm going to work with this. Try to find out what parts I've got to put in. What parts can be installed as I paint. Then I can go back and brush paint. Or I don't know. We will see. So, uh, Broham, stand by. Well, I've got some sanding done. And I've right now I am waiting on the... Tamiya extra thin cement to uh, to dry or to harden or to cure bond how about that bond I've got the interior the body's not put together I've just got it held together with clamps um, I'm trying to get the uh, door panels and dash glued into place and that is what is happening now one thing that I will note about this body is you see, let's see, this crease here, there's one here, there's a divot right there. Both sides are that same way. Those are just, um, and there's also one right there. You can see it right there. Those are just, um, divots in the in the in the in the plastic um don't know what color i'm going with yet so it's kind of difficult to say you know am i going to fix those or not i don't know a lighter color you'll probably never see them i don't know what colors a um what i don't even know what year this is to be honest with you so 57 is the year that was released. So this was a 57 or 58 Cadillac. So anyway, I don't know what the factory colors were. I like to try, I like to try if I'm doing a box stock build like this to, to do something that's factory. That's black. I don't know if I want to do black because of, of the body, um, panel, uh, you know divots and, and dips and stuff it's a lighter color then you can get away with it but um i'm thinking that they probably did a uh, a white or something like that i'll have to look to see what the colors are anyway that's where i'm at got the uh did get the back let's see the back attached to the front seat the back seat butts up against the uh you don't have a back for it. Um, the roof, however, does glue on and it will have to be painted and glued on later. Ugh, I hate doing that. And the front window is the actual structure that the uh, roof sets upon. So, 
Yeah, this is a this is an oddball for sure. Oddball kit. Um, I'll have to then just bare metal foil, which is a really nice raised edge on the window. I'll bare metal foil that window. And it goes, you know, it just that's that's what your that's what your roof attaches to. It's kind of peculiar. Also, these little quarter windows or whatever vent windows are still on the uh, tree. I left them on there. They're right here. So that's those. Oh, and the tires are a um, just a hard styrene tire, but it has a groove right there there and that would be white Ugh, how in the heck will I paint those unless I could find out how to put these in the drill maybe glue them together put them in the drill get it spinning and then touch it with the paintbrush all the way around as it's spinning probably get a pretty consistent white wall that way but anyway that's where I'm at so uh let me see what I can do with this interior and we'll probably get some primer on it pretty quick stand by all right well next day after tons of sanding not that's not a complaint that's just a part of this hobby but after tons of sanding fitting figuring <laughs> another f word and fighting um i have some parts together however this is a very unique model i've never had one that used the windshield front windshield and rear window glass as the actual mount for the roof so this doesn't glue necessarily to the body it glues to the windows these have a very heavy or a very defined edge that will be bare metal foiled that's no problem at all um and they you mount them and then your roof goes on top of that it's going to be a real booger to get the uh get everything to line up right but i am like down for this challenge because i don't know what attracts me to this crazy stuff but anyway billy bear thanks for sending me this <laughs> It's a cool kit though, and I can't get over the fact that I'm I'm working with something that was produced originally in 1957. And uh and, I mean that is classic right there. That would never uh be sanded off of here. Although this again is a 96 kit, that would never ever ever be taken off of this kit. Because I think that is the nostalgia of that's what draws me that's what draws me to these kits is the i'm i'm trying to i can't go back i can't go to 1957 i can't go to 1960 or 65 i'm in 2022 i wasn't even born until 1976 but i can go back by means of this and that's what i find interesting let me know what you guys think about that. Is that a crazy thought? Or is that valid? Is it something that I could say, um, yeah, that that's, that, that's what I find the intrigue with this hobby. I am almost, so guys, look at this. Do you see these? I have a stash that's like, I would say I have an amazing stash. I like my stash. But, but when it comes to saying, hey, I want to build that one or whichever one it may be, it's like, why? Why would I want to build a 69 Camaro or a 69 Torino or a, a Duster or GTX? You know, why would I want to build a 53 Ford? Although that is a cool kit right there. Actually, that kit's right, right there and that's a cool one. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is When I look up at my stash and I say what's next, 
I'm almost disinterested. And this is like crazy because I've got every facet of AMT, Monogram, Ravel. It's like I'm almost disinterested to build any of these because they're they're not all the same, but they're they're not they're let's just say they're modern. In the sense that they're not multi piece. This is crazy. Why am I like this? I don't know. But anyway, but when Billy sent me this cattle, I, I could honestly, guys, I could care less for a Cadillac Eldorado <laughs> Broham. I could care less about that car. But what intrigued me was how it was put to, how it was molded, how it was designed by the designers of in Ravel, by Ravel, back in 1957. Why did old was his name Johnny? I'm, I'm intrigued by him take this guy taking a rotary tool and just scarring up the uh, the mold to make it look like carpet and he failed miserably but I think that is so classic that it draws me there's there's other markings on this on this kit that some guy took a rotary tool and ground into the into the mold that nine right there how do I know it's a nine because it's got the line under it and it made a, a negative impression because he ground. Those things are what draws me to this hobby. Just draws me. When I want, there's there's this guy that that builds model kits. He's not specifically a car builder. He builds everything. He builds model ships. He builds model planes. He builds model cars, model trucks. His channel is Charlie Mack. And I am so intrigued when I watch Charlie Mack because I don't know what it is about you, Charlie. But when I watch you build or watch you with your completed builds, Charlie doesn't do builds. He does, here, here's my completed build. It's always something classic. It's always something interesting. It's always something that's not, it's not this. It's not the norm. It's the, uh, it's the, the peculiar, the odd, the nostalgic kits that are from, you know, yesteryear. We may not ever see the Aurora kits again or whatever. Charlie builds them and I'm like, I am so glued to his finished product because I'm like, wow. that. And so what's Char what Charlie Mack has done has got me turned on to that. It's the classic stuff, the stuff that you don't see now. Why do we have a two-part body here? Because they didn't have the technology apparently then to, to form this in a single-part body. And I get to I get to experience that. And I know I'm just rambling on and rambling on. But anyway, I'm having fun with the frustration of building this kit. This kit is very frustrating. It may turn out to be a terrible-looking kit. I don't think so. I'm going to give it my all. But I just love this stuff. I love the I love the pyros that you that, that you've got you guys have sent me. Um, the the I love the little Renwall kit that I just built the 148 scale. Why? It's different. It's old. It's from yesteryear. It's long gone. You'll never see it again. And that is what is special about this hobby. We have people like Billy Bear that sent me this that I wouldn't I would have never looked for this kit but because he sent it and I op or I opened it, it was already open I opened the box I was like I've got to build it I've got to build it this is classic but anyway guys I'm going to cut this video here there's really no progress done on this kit it's a lot of head scratching um uh trimming fitting but I'm going to end this now thanks for watching this video guys you guys my my audience of 9,000 at this point, like 9,598, I think is what it was the last I looked. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for bearing with me through my, through my rambles, uh, rants, rambling. Um, I hope some of you guys appreciate it. Um, but yeah, this is this so much fun to me. I can sit down that that's one other thing <laughs> oh gosh here's another rant shut up matthew is i can sit down with this again and go back in time 
if I opened a a modern kit, I'm not going back in time. It may be in the 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 subject matter may be something from way back, but not the actual kit. And I'm just so drawn to this stuff. Crazy as it may be, as frustrating as it may be, as difficult as it may be, I can't wait to get this thing together. I can't wait to say here it is and it's the finished kit. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for bearing with my crazy nut job self. And uh, hey, if you haven't subscribed already, go subscribe. Hit the subscription button, I would ask you. If you hadn't already liked this this video, oops, what's that on my finger? That's black plastic from carving it off of here. Like this video, guys. Um, go check out our Facebook group. Join Model Car Videos Facebook group. I encourage you to do so. Go check out Hobby Nut Models. This will receive MCW paint. I'm thinking some sort of lighter color to cover up some of the imperfections that I already spoke about. I've got several light colors. I've got to kind of look at the uh, Cadillac Eldorado, Eldorado um, paint schemes to see what may be something factory. I'd like to stick with that. Hobby Nut Models, go check him out. Uh, link in the description to Hobby Nut Models in this video. Go check out Mark's line of MCW paint, kits, supplies, everything you need. Also, I'd appreciate it if you go to check out my Teespring store. Grab yourself a t-shirt. I uh, had someone just yesterday from uh, Denmark say, Matthew, I would like to buy a shirt, but is the shipping... Do, do the, does it ship from the United States to Denmark? No. Uh, the way Teespring works, they have locations throughout the world and when you order a teespring uh shirt from my site if you live in denmark it's going to ship from europe so you're going to save on those shipping costs if you if you buy from america it's going to ship from america if you buy from canada it's going to ship from canada so you're going to save on those shipping costs don't be afraid of that so go check out my teespring store grab yourself a cup hoodie shirt sticker whatever you you can find there that you enjoy or like and also Thank you to my Patreon members. I greatly appreciate your support. We'll be having that live stream that I'm talking about very, very soon. And uh, if you're not a member of the Patreon, it's right down here in the video. There went my air compressor bleed off valve. Impeccable timing. But go check out my Patreon. Uh, linked in the description below as well as everything else that I've already mentioned. Go check it out. Join if you haven't already. If you want to support me, Go join my Patreon. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching this video. And hey, when we come back, we're going to have more progress. And we'll figure out what color we're going to paint this El Cat Cadillac Eldorado Bro Broham. Brome. Hey, guys. Take care. And we will see you later.